Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This week we're gonna talk about DC fast charging. Let's get to it. For today's sponsor, we have 70My Dash Cam Omni. We also have the hardwire kit. Very interesting. I'm gonna be installing the 70My dash cam in this vehicle. I usually like to have my dash cam right kind of behind the rear view mirror. So I'll go ahead and run the wiring and get things ready to mount. All right, it is super nice. So it comes with this sticker that you put on the windshield. It's actually very clear. And then you put this adhesive mount on and it's very nice because if you ever wanted to like swap this out to a different car, you just twist it and it comes right off. Yep, just like that, goes back on. So I'll go ahead and mount the wire. It'll go just kind of behind all the seals and around and then underneath the dash. So we'll get that going. All right, just got done installing it. It's actually a lot easier than you think. For this dash cam, all you have to do is kind of plug in one end to the camera and the other end to the power supply and just kind of tuck the cable behind all the places where it says to. And now we're gonna start it up. Maybe we'll clean off the windshield, make sure we get some good picture, see how it works. Looks like it's got like a little face. It says I gotta connect to the app to activate the dash cam. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and add Omni dash cam. That's the one. Click the power button to authorize. So click the power button authorize. It's got a little smiley face and thumbs up. And we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so we got it all set up on the phone. So let's go driving. So you might be wondering what is different about this dash cam versus other dash cam. This is the first ever 360 degree rotating dash cam. So it has 60 frames per second, an f1.5 aperture, which captures enhances image quality in low light conditions. Equipped with Pure Cell Plus S HDR technology. This delivers the best in class low light performance. It does have a smart parking guardian mode. It's enabled by AI motion detection. Because of the swivel design, flexible shooting angles ensures that your car is always covered when parked. It also has collision detection as well as time-lapse recording. If you're in the market for a new dash cam, I will leave a link to this product with a coupon code in the video description below. I realize we have viewers from all ranges of electric vehicle experience from beginner all the way to very advanced. So I do feel I need to start a little bit from the beginning, so we'll go quickly. Electric vehicles have batteries, no surprise. But as you use the vehicle, the battery depletes and needs to be recharged. So in order to recharge the vehicle, there are a couple ways to do that. The electric vehicle battery is actually direct current, and I'm gonna break up charging into three different segments. So the first segment of charging, I'm gonna say is level one charging, and that is usually done from a regular household outlet. For the US, that's 110 volts, and usually around 10 to 15 amps. So there's electric vehicle supply equipment, and it itself does not convert it to direct current, so DC. It is still in AC form when it enters the vehicle. The vehicle has an onboard charger that will convert that to direct current for the batteries to charge. So level two charging is done at home and also away from home. So you can still purchase electric vehicle supply equipment for your own home, or sometimes businesses or places like that will have those on site as well. These are usually set up in places where you're expected to park for longer periods of time. These chargers can usually deliver 30, 40, even 50 amps. These are still using alternating current, still using electric vehicle supply equipment, still needs the onboard charger to convert it to direct current. So DC fast charging, also level three charging, is usually not done at home. And there are specific units that are set up in parking lots or on businesses. You may have also heard of Tesla. They have a fast charging network. That is DC fast charging. These can often go up to 200 amps. So charging very, very quickly 
One other thing to mention about DC fast charging is there is not a need for an onboard charger. You are not converting any energy. It is coming in as DC and it's just filling up your batteries straight away. So the differences between level one, two, and three are usually charging times. Now there's a lot of different factors that can go into this, the size of the battery, how fast your car can charge, and other things. But for just big round number purposes, I will say level three charging, you can charge your car in less than an hour. Level two charging, you can charge your car in say like five hours. And level one charging, you can charge your car in 24 hours. For the DC fast charging, there are a couple different types. There is the NACS, that is the type that Tesla uses. Another one is called Chatamo. This one I think was popular with the Nissan Leaf, some other early vehicles, but is mostly phasing out now. Most electric vehicles now, other than Tesla, use CCS fast charging. CCS charging actually stands for Combined Charging System. So this has all of the elements of the AC, but also combines DC, so you get a combined charging output. That's what I'm gonna be putting in the Porsche. I know there's gonna be several that say you should really do the NACS. Tesla says they're gonna open up their fast charger network and that would be the way to go. When I convert it, this car will be just like all the other cars that need to somehow adapt to that NACS system. To my knowledge, there's also not an aftermarket kit that allows for the DC fast charging with the NACS. The kit I got, what it does is it communicates with the external fast charger to kind of tell it how much energy to dump in and it controls kind of the circuits, the high voltage circuits to allow it to come in in a safe way. I ended up ordering a fast charging kit from Felton and it comes with a contactor controller. You probably saw from previous episode, it comes with uh, the 200 amp fuse as well as two additional contactors. So the contactors, the fuse, and this box need to go into the high voltage area. It also comes with, this is the fast charging plug. It's got a locking, what they call locking motor. So basically it locks it when it's in place. So this is a light slash button that should go kind of next to the charging port. So this is kind of an emergency stop button and it also has a light that indicates uh, what the charger is doing. It also comes with all the wiring and um, pins, connectors that you need. So we started on a previous episode with the fuse as well as the contactors, but I'm going to find a place for the other box that needs to be in the high voltage area as well as try to do all the wiring. I put this uh, middle plate on to see uh, what kind of room I've got and I thought, oh, it might be just great, perfect, kind of height wise. So it fits just like that so I can mount it on any sidewall except all the plugs are on that side so I can't mount it like this. So I've got a little pass through right here so I think I'm going to mount it right about there. So it turns out that this profile is too high. So uh, I just 3, 3D printed another cover. Um, this is, I'm gonna call it just a dust cover. There's no kind of gaskets or anything around the plugs. And so I just tried to measure best I could the openings and the geometry. So we'll see how this fits. <laughs> that is amazing. I think that's really good. Good for me. Yeah, that works great. All right, this is where I've got it mounted. Connectors have enough room, they just, the wires will go down. So I'm gonna take this plate off, we can make all the connections. We are starting out the wiring here with the pre-charge circuit. I'm stripping off and crimping on terminals to connect to the relay and to both sides of the positive contactor.
I need to clean up this wiring mess a little bit, but this is the contactor controller. I'll say the bottom plug here does all the controlling. So it switches all the contactors, uh, the pre-charge relay. So I've got all those wired. I made little plugs for the various contactors. So again, I could take out a contactor and not have to splice wires. And again, that goes to the pre-charge relay the CCS contactors as well as just your high voltage contactors. On this other side, there's two plugs. One is a high voltage sense. And so that's basically to sense, uh, I've got one here and one here, but that's just to sense when the high voltage is active. And then the other one is the CCS, I'll call it sense. And that's to here and here. And again, that's just to detect if there's uh, fast charging that's trying to happen. So that's those three plugs. This plug is, I'll call it more of a communication plug. So all those get fed out of the battery box to other things like just the feedback from the lock motor. It also gets its power and ground from the car to be able to send to these wires. It's got the pilot and proximity wires and can wiring. So that's all these, that's gonna exit the high voltage area so basically a lot of those wires are not going to be completed just yet because this needs to get put in the car and then I'm going to run the wires to length. So there's one thing I need to figure out is where I'm going to do the charge port. So if you guys have some good suggestions for charge port location, I'd love to hear them. Um, in my previous build, I put it under the license plate. That seemed to be pretty good. Um, I could also do it up front somewhere. I could do it where the Porsche had its gas fill point. It's kind of on the front fender. Um, but anyways, if you got some other thoughts or suggestions, please let me know in the comments. The last piece of hardware is this one. This is the CCS VCU. So the CCS vehicle control unit. And this one essentially communicates with the external CCS system. So it communicates to tell it to turn on, to tell it the amperage, all that good stuff. That's what this one is for. It's got a lot of communication. It's got CAN, it's got the charge port control and proximity constant power, it's got the charge port lock motor, it senses the socket, it's got temperature inputs, and then it's got uh, the LEDs that go for this one. The stop charge button as well as an indicator button. I'm not gonna be able to install all of it today because again, I don't know where I want the charge port and I need the battery boxes in position so I can get all the wires exactly to length. So I'm gonna call this one CCS Fast Charging Part One. We can't quite install everything we need at this moment. So the parts that will be left is, I need to figure out where I want the charge port. I also need to get the battery boxes mounted. And so once those are done, I can start kind of completing the other wires. So the other wires are gonna be kind of more like chassis wires and then also wires running from and to the charge port. So we're gonna get close, but not all the way. I don't usually do this, but I should probably do this more. I'm gonna give you a sneak peek at the next episode and I want your feedback. Here is the backside of the Porsche and I'm going to be designing some brackets to mount the rear battery box. And there are some really good mounting points um, down below. So basically these, these two here, they held on a big bracket that supported the exhaust. And also there's uh, some good mounting points here where the rear bumper was mounted. Also on top where the suspension, this is where the transmission mounts were. So again, some really heavy duty mounting. I'm going to use them to create some brackets to hold on the battery box. So I'm gonna show you a sneak peek here at the design and let me know what you would change. This is kind of a rough scan of the motor bay. I probably need to rescan it and make sure I get some good measurements. So I'm gonna go ahead and hide that. So the red piece is one that I already have. This was to mount the rear side of the motor. The battery box, this is what I've been terming the rear battery box, is going to fit behind it, kind of underneath the trunk. The bumper kind of is out around here. It's actually the bumper is higher than this plane here. So there are some really strong uh, mounting points underneath the vehicle. My initial thought was to come off here uh, to try and support all the weight. I just thought it was a long way to cantilever everything and this will probably be 250, maybe 300 pounds. And so my thought was to have these um, plates here on either side uh, mount onto where the bumper goes. So again, some nice strong mounts. And that way I can kind of loop around the whole underside and that will kind of carry a lot of the weight so it's not all just suspended. My main thought was for the mounting points for the battery boxes, I've got four big uh, half inch bolts that go through the entire battery box, kind of keep everything together. My thought was to kind of use those as the main mounting points. 
However, as I was looking at these and doing this strap around, I thought, well, I can go ahead and do these. These are screw holes that already exist and go into the mounting plates. This is the only one I was kind of thinking, God, do I need this or should I have it? Is this kind of strap around the back? Because um, I don't know that I need it. And then it kind of says, well, why don't you do a strap around the front? So let me know if you think kind of I need that or not. And my thought was, if I do that again, I'll just kind of reuse some of the holes that are there. Again, this kind of shows you the motor bay. Go ahead and hide that. So this is what I've been turning the main battery box. This is what I've been turning the front battery box. And my thought was there is a main mounting point up front for, this was originally for the internal combustion engine. It had one mount here, as well as the mount here on top of the rear suspension. Those were uh, transmission mounts. So those are kind of all heavy duty and that's what I'm planning to reuse. And then underneath, uh, create kind of a frame or structure. So again, this is where the front mount would be. I thought I could have these go up here. These ones come all the way back to here and bolt in here. So for this one, again, I uh, got big mounting hole here as well as one on the other side over here so that would make sure this is secure uh, this big one has got mounting to this front one so again these should be mounted together again i could add lots of little triangle gussets and things but my main question is am i way off or do i need to look at some other things i think i mentioned this is the next episode based on the comments and i might need to rescan it might be more than an episode away but uh looking forward to your comments and uh, hopefully it'll help me get some good mounting for this. I should also mention, I've been treating these as separate battery boxes, but my intent is that they are all just one battery box. So they're all gonna be mounted in the same place. Um, they're gonna have cables and wires going from one to another. But my thought is I'm gonna actually kind of cover those up or join them so it's all just one big battery box. The reason for doing this is uh, once everything's together, like those three battery boxes, uh, maybe that plus the motor, it's gonna be like, thousand or 1200 pounds and that's just not easy to move around or mount so my thought was to be able to mount this in sections would be easiest but again i'm treating this just as one big battery box so that's going to do it for this time see you next time so ccs stands for we are starting out the wiring here with the <clears throat> we're starting out the wiring here with the gosh why can't i think of it 